Let's kick it off with some local, a uh, big local story. That'd be the 44th annual Dingling's Slow Pitch Softball Tournament. On the phone, we have Dingling's President Larry Pompilia. Larry, thank you for joining us tonight. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having us on there. Oh, no problem. No problem at, problem at all. Now, uh, Larry, whenever I, I talk about the Dingling Tournament, because I, I do play in the league, uh, and I talk about it in Catanning in the Four City area, a lot of people know what I'm talking about. But some people kind of look at me and give me the... Uh, give me the, the tilted head kind of thing, and they, they're asking me, what's a ding a So if you could, uh, could you maybe just give us kind of a, 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 an explanation on what the group is, a little bit of the history of the group, and what it is you guys do in the community. Okay, yeah, I know what you're saying. I know where you're coming from with that. Uh, every time we go to sell tickets years ago, people say, what the hell's a ding and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, our club was formed in 1969 with the sole purpose uh, to raise money for youth sports in the uh, Channel Valley area. Uh, since uh, we started, we have given away around three hundred thousand dollars to youth sports in uh, Roll Valley, Shannon Valley, and uh, we also have given away about eighty thousand in uh, scholarships to Shannon Valley and West Smokin uh, students. Um, it's worked out very well for us. Our Dingling Tournament is our big fundraiser every year. Uh, that's where we get all our money from. Uh, this year we have a twenty-two team tournament. Uh, we've had teams from North Carolina, Ohio, West Virginia, New York. Uh, this year it's around Pittsburgh area and uh, that that general area there, but uh, some local teams too. Oh, yeah, absolutely, and I've I've been around the atmosphere. You see, you see teams, you know, they they come in the trailers and they they sleep they sleep over sometimes, and it, just because they have such great distances to travel. Now uh, you hit it on that a little bit. So basically, all of the money that you make on this tournament goes towards uh, the scholarships and pumping back into the community. Yes, uh, last year we gave away around fifteen thousand uh, dollars. We're hoping to do the same uh, again this year, uh, and we rely so much on that tournament. That's our big, you know, our big fundraiser every year. Uh, now, the, the, another thing that you, you you hinted on this too, I wanted you maybe elaborate a little bit more on the uh, the Dingling Scholarship. Now, I, it was go, it's been going on for quite some time. Can you maybe uh, give a give a brief description on what the Dingling Scholarship is? Yeah, uh, yeah. What we've done is uh, over the years we've changed it in the last uh, five years. Um, we had three original members that are still in our club. So we named the scholarships after them. Uh, we have the Jack Boyer Scholarship, which goes to the top male athlete at Channel Valley. Uh, we have the Bert Colton Senior Scholarship, which goes to the top female. And then the third scholarship is a random one. Whichever one came in was borderline. It didn't make the first two. Um, gets the third scholarship, and that's named after uh, Red Polinsky. There are three original members that are still uh, that were with the club. So that's uh, how we changed that format. No, oh, it, it, it sounds like uh, sounds it sounds like the money obviously being put to good use. Uh, let's let's go to the tournament just a little bit. Let's talk about the ins and outs of that. Now you said twenty two teams this year. Uh, now is that a set number or is there a, is there a limit on the amount of teams that can get in or do you guys do you guys you gotta just like take a, a, a rolling application? Well, we set out invitations every year. Uh, we can't handle much more than that. Twenty two is pretty much borderline for us. Uh, we actually eighteen would be perfect for us because of the fields and stuff. Uh, and if you get rain, you get behind and stuff. But uh, this year we have 22 teams. Um, it's double elimination tournament. Um, so, uh, on now those 22 teams, how many fields are they going to be using on there? And uh, what where are those fields located? Are they all in the general, the same general area? Yeah, we use the Eighth Border Little League field. Uh, we use the uh, big field behind the American Legion in uh, Roll Valley, and we use the uh, softball field in New Mine. Now. Uh, in the case that there is some inclement weather, do are some of those fields drain better than others? Would you be would you be moving around games if there if the weather got bad or uh, what what what's the situation with if it, if there is some rain? Well, uh, the best field is New Mine because it's uh, you know it's it's all from all the coal mines up there and stuff. We put a lot of topsoil and stuff on it over the years and stuff. It drains the best. Uh, uh, the Yates Sport field they put some money into that over the years and it's not too bad. The worst field is probably the one behind the Legion, but we only use it on Saturday. So uh, if we make it through Saturday, we're we're pretty fine. Well, luckily the the uh, the forecast for Saturday is pretty nice. So we uh, we may get lucky there. Uh, let's talk about the game itself a little bit because uh, I always found this very interesting and the way that the uh, that the, the the tournament has stayed pretty much timeless and classic. Uh, you use all aluminum bats. No composite bats are allowed. And you use kind of these the mushy kind of soft uh, softballs. Can you kind of give the reasoning behind that, or if, if there have been any changes to kind of preserve that, or what? Uh, what? What? What is the uh, with the thinking in that? Because of the, just because this is a, uh, the 44th year of the tournament. Uh, you guys like our tournament uh, for one reason because it's an old-fashioned tournament. Uh, we use uh, like it's, like you said, all aluminum bats. 
Uh, we use a Dudley SB12 softball. We've used that in the league since the league started back in the early 70s. Uh, a few years we did wander away, and there's usually around 100 home runs hit uh, every year down you know, on Monk with the three fields. But uh, one year we had like 220 home runs hit when we changed balls. And teams that are, don't have the power, but they're like great hitting teams, they can't compete if you get onto a field like New Mine and stuff with other teams that have power hitters. There's just too many home runs. Uh, so we try to keep the same, and they just love it. Uh, it's also the oldest tournament in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, it was voted number one uh, in the state by softballplayers.com. So uh, we, like, we like to keep it the same. They, they just love the old-fashioned format. Oh, and it, it, you look at it, and it, it, is, it puts a lot more emphasis on the skill. You can't just uh, hit a bunch of home runs and hopefully you win. I mean, obviously that's a big part of it, but it's not the only part of it. Uh, something that I've always admired quite a bit with the, uh, the, the dinglings and the tournament that you guys put on, whether it's the spring dingling tournament or the, uh, the big ding, as it's referred to in, in, the, in the summer, is the, is the stat-keeping ability. Can you, can you tell us what a great – and I'm just going to say it out now. You guys do a great job with the stats. I've seen stats – being brought up from decades ago. Uh, go ahead and tell us about how, how good the stat keep keeping is for these tournaments and how uh, the reporting system is for that. Well, that's all Red Polinsky. He's been, he's been doing that since 1969. If you've played in that tournament in like 1969, for instance, and you went two for four, and that's the only time you played, he has your stats for it. Every, every day they're upgraded. Uh, and then at the end of the year, uh, he puts on the back of the dugout, he'll put everybody's sheet, everybody that's made all tournament teams, who our MVPs are, uh, who who has the most home runs. Uh, he does a fantastic job of keeping all this. That's a lot of work, and but he keeps everything uh, right up to the right up to the tee with that. Well, yeah. Have you ever heard of another tournament that has forty years of statistics and can go back and look at those kind of things? Have you ever heard of an, in any other uh, local or even? Um, the regional event where you can actually go back and look at that thing, or is that, is that something that the Dings take pride in? Uh, it, it is. It's something that the Dinglings take pride in. I've played a lot of tournaments over the years. Uh, when I started playing when I was 16, I'm 58 now. Uh, I don't play softball. I haven't played softball for the last 14 years. But, uh, yeah, I've never been in a tournament ever where they would bring up your stats like, okay, he's uh, 45 for 90 with 12 home runs and 37 RBIs with six triples, 22 doubles, and <laughs> things like that and walked 12 times uh, how many runs they've scored uh, I've never been in a tournament ever that's that I've played you know in a lot of tournaments over the years but I've, I've never ever been to a tournament that keeps track and the guys love it they, I mean you know it's an ego thing guys love hearing their names uh, announced uh, how many hits they've had and things like that and then we've had some some very 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 good softball players Tom Miller for example uh, his stats at the Dingling tournament he's 66 for 99 with 33 home runs and that's when the real dead ball era was. Now, with the new equipment, I couldn't imagine what he'd do now. That's that's unbelievable. That's a, that's a ridiculous average to, to actually think about that. Exactly. Uh, let's talk about the time frame a little bit. I know that um, on Friday, the, a lot of the local teams start start up play, and uh, mainly because it's easier for them to start play on Friday. You don't want the teams that are coming in from other states who may have work on Friday to have to come the whole way out that night or they would have to miss a game. So uh, can you take us through basically day by day? Friday, like I said, probably going to be more local, I assume. And then Saturday, you kind of just go at a full bore. And then what kind of consists on Sunday? Well, what we did, John, over the years, uh, the tournament kind of a little bit stagnant there, and we wanted to put an influx of different ideas into it. So come up with the idea of starting on Friday night with the local teams playing and then putting them into the brackets on Saturday, giving them like a, maybe a bye or things like that uh, to just to get a little influx of people down there. And it's worked out fantastic for us. Uh, on Friday night we have, uh, we'll have two games at New Mine, two games at Yatesboro, and we'll have live entertainment down there. This year Brett Cog will play acoustic uh, after the last game, probably around 8 o'clock. He'll play till like 10 or 10.30. Mm -hmm. And then Saturday we'll go full bore into our tournament. And uh, all the teams will be there. And uh, on Saturday night, we'll have a DJ there. This year, we're not going to do the DJ on Saturday night. Uh, and on Sunday, we have uh, Big Moose, uh, the 1021 station out of Dubois. Mm -hmm. They're coming down there now for about seven or eight years. Uh, he does uh, his live broadcast from down there. And we get a lot of senior citizens down there who come down and listen to the Polka uh, station. This year, we have the, uh, we'll give the scholarships away at 11 o'clock at the field. Uh, three scholarships away, and we'll also have a pro 
pierogi eating contest right after we give us uh, scholarships away. Well, it sounds like it's more than just softball that's going on at these fields. Uh, do, you, do you generally see a, a lot? And uh, I, I don't want to sound like I've never been there because I'm there quite. I've been there quite a few times. But uh, can you just elaborate just the the amount of people that show up to this thing? And uh, I know that on Route 85. You, you always see cars lined up against the highway because parking's completely taken up, and they're parking along the highway and relatively close to the road. Can you just kind of explain the magnitude of people that you see throughout the weekend just pour into the area? Yeah, that's why exactly why we did the uh, we changed the format down. It was getting to the point where it used to be years ago um, the roads were just packed with cars, both sides of the road, all the way up. The parking lots were all full. Then it got to the point where the, the crowds were kind of dwindling a little bit. Now, since we changed the format around. Uh, the parking lots are full. Uh, we get good crowds down. They they love the Friday night thing. It's just like a kind of a, like a local want to do like a uh, a party type atmosphere down there to say uh, where people come down and enjoy themselves. There's food there on uh, Friday night. Just a little bit of food, just basics. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we have the uh, goodies and the woodies. We always call them. Mm-hmm. And on Saturday we'll have the uh, chicken barbecue. Uh, there's country style ribs down there. The hot sausage. Uh, uh, hamburgers and sauce, uh, halouski, uh, hot dogs and crowd, pizza, French fries. Uh, it'll be a, just wide open after Friday night. But Friday night we just kind of tone it down a little bit with the food and stuff uh, because it's only, there's only you know four games down there at both fields. Uh, but it's yeah, it's turned into a great great atmosphere up there. Oh yeah, and you, and you just see you basically see the population of Rural Valley in the New Mine area just almost double whenever the uh, the tournament rolls into town. Uh, just, just if people are wondering uh, the times in which they can go down there, you know, Friday night, I believe, uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, if it starts at around, I think, at 6 in the evening, and then on Saturday, I think things kick off as early as 8 o'clock, and I'm not sure about Sunday because it, apparently uh, my team really hasn't made it that far in the tournament, I'm uh, ashamed to say. But uh, can you kind of tell us the times and when things kind of ramp up and uh, kind of shut down, too? Sure. Uh, on Friday nights, we'll start at 6 o'clock. There'll be two games at the New Mine Ball Field, 6 and 7. And it'll be a six and seven game down at uh, Yatesboro, and then we'll start again at eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, Audrey Wilson will sing the uh, national anthem for us, and we'll go into full bore on Saturday. Uh, there'll be a home run, der- home run hitting contest, home run derby, I guess, mm-hmm. on uh, Saturday afternoon. I think that's scheduled at four o'clock, and on Sunday morning uh, we'll play through into the King C game. Uh, final game is set at uh, for three o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday. And Audrey will come back again. She'll sing the national anthem for us again. She's been doing that for probably 15 years. And then uh, after that, everybody just kind of just party a little bit. Yeah, and uh, it just, it's just it's just an atmosphere full of tradition because of the stats and the history connected back to the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. And people talking about you know their glory days in the ding tournament, the big ding as, as people call it. And uh, even the people that aren't playing talk about when they played in it. The younger generation who you know just graduated high school, they're you know, they're picking up on teams now because they want to get involved in it. Is is it just a culture out there where everyone everyone just seems to be involved in one way or another? Oh yeah, definitely. And we have a great crew in our club. We have thirty five members that. Uh, I mean, it's a lot of hard work putting this together, especially the umpiring and things like that. But yeah, the, the community just loves it. It gives them a place to go. Uh, people mingle, and like you said, guys just love talking about uh, yesteryear when they uh, won the tournament, or they or the bittersweet part of it when they lost, uh, you know, in the last inning or things like that. But uh, you get some great athletes up. We've had, and there's been quite a few uh, great athletes in, the, in that tournament over the years. Well, uh, Larry, I, I can't wait till it starts. It's like only a couple of days away. It's a great weekend. Uh, like you said, it's going to take place in the Yatesboro Field, some down at the Legion Field in Rural Valley, also in New Mine. Thank you very much for being on the show, and uh, gr- g- good luck, and hopefully there's good weather because I think it's going to be a great tournament. Thank you for joining us, and uh, I'll see you down there this weekend. Hey, thanks, John. Uh, and the Dingling Sports Clubs, uh, we thank you from the bottom of our heart for having us on there and putting the info out on us. Oh, anytime. It is my pleasure. Thank you very much. We'll see you later. You're most welcome. Thank you. That was Dingling President Larry Pompilia. He is going to be down at the Dingfield. Uh, Dingfield is the one in Yatesboro, also in New Mine and Rural Valley. That is going on all weekend. Like you said, great athletes, great uh, competition, great friends, great food, great everything. It's an atmosphere that everyone should at least check out once. No matter what part of Armstrong County or even the state you're from, you should check it out. A lot of tradition, a lot of uh, just a classic atmosphere to it. All right, got to take a quick break. When I come back, I'm going to have...